26.9 checks or what checks do we do as a gas engineer to make sure that gas appliances are safe. My name is Alan Hart and in today's video I'm back at the National Gas Centre for Excellence and I'm here with Michael and Michael's going to go through the 26.9 checks. So first of all he's going to go on the board, go through the checks with you and then we're going to go to an appliance and then just talk through the 26.9 checks. Now, this is something that we just normally just naturally do, but I find sometimes in some of the groups, people are not sure what the 26.9 checks are. So as I say today, we're gonna to go through what they are, show you where to find it as well in the in the gas, uh, gas safety book. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's go over to Michael. Thank you, Alan. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is on the 26.9 checks. Um, since doing these videos, a lot of people have said on various formants, you know, what are the checks? What are the 26.9 checks? Is it just, you know, what, what are we talking about? Um, so the 26.9 checks, first of all, what are they? Um, we take them from the gas safety installation and use regulations. You can see a copy of it behind me on the board. This is the gas safety installation and use regulations. You can get a copy of this document online um, if you just type in the uh, gas safety installation and use regulations you'll be able to find it on the hsc's website free to download you can also get it through the gas safety website um, if you do that you'll be presented with this document we've got it in pdf form on the board now all this document is is all the regulations around the gas industry and um, certainly domestically um, and it tells you everything you need to know. Every engineer should have a copy of this document with them um, so that they can refer to the relevant processes and procedures associated with what the work that they are doing. Um, but what are specifically the 26.9 checks? So if I just skip to them now, you can see Regulation 26, Section 9 states that where a person performs work on a gas appliance, he shall immediately thereafter examine A, the effectiveness of any flue, B, the supply of combustion air. C, subject to subparagraph CA, it's operating pressure or heat input or where necessary both. CA, if it's not reasonably practical to examine its operating pressure or heat input or where necessary both, it's combustion performance. And then D, it's operation so as to ensure it's safe functioning. So what we're talking about there is safety devices. And we, you've heard me in previous videos refer to this as FAGS, flu, air, gas, safety so now we've gone through where it is and where to find it we're going to do a really quick video we're going to go to an appliance and we're going to carry out the 26.9 checks so that anybody who wasn't sure how it looks in you know how it physically looks when we're doing a video you know when you're doing it practically um can see that for themselves so let's go over to the boiler and have a look here we've got a pot and a show and we're going to carry out the relevant 26.9 checks so the first one that we're aware of is check the flu so the flue isn't just what we can see outside the boiler. The reason I've got the case off here is to inspect inside the boiler. So we can see the air inlet up here and we can also inspect the inside the appliance as well. Um, we can look for any thermostats, make sure that they're okay. Um, any overheat stats, make sure that they, they look okay, they've not been bridged out. These aren't part of 26.9 checks, however, they are part of a visual inspection. Um, what we're gonna do now is, once we've inspected inside the boiler, is we're going to put the case back on and we're going to take a um, combustion flue analysis reading on it. We're going to take the gas rate and we're also going to take the inlet working pressure on the appliance at the same time. Um, so we'll pause the video now and then we'll go across and do that. So we've now set up our combustion flue analyzer. We've got our imperial meter here. We've also got our manometer connected to the inlet working pressure point of the, of the, inlet of the appliance. Um, we're now going to put the boiler into high fire we're going to, with it being an imperial meter, we want to time the table, how long it takes for one full revolution. And once we've got that, we can then go to the board and gas rate it. Now, um, there's going to be quite a bit going on here, so I'll try and explain as I'm going. So first of all, we're putting the boiler in high fire. And then we're going to... Start the clock now. So our inlet working pressure is 18 millibar. Our 
ratio at the minute is 0 0.0010, 0 0011, sorry. Our gas rate is going to be based on 31 seconds. And our combustion flue anal analyzer reading is, has a ratio of 0 0.0013, 117 parts per million, and our CO2 percentage is 8.9. So we can stop the test at that. So in that short period of time, we've taken our gas rate, our inlet working pressure and also our combustion flue and, 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 and analyzer reading. Now you would let the appliance heat up for 10 minutes ideally beforehand, however um, with us only having a short radiator circuit on this appliance we, that's why we've not started the, um, the, the high fire until we've got the, the probe in the boiler itself. Um, so let's go across to the board and then we'll talk about what the gas rate works out at and we'll also discuss um, how we test the safety devices on the boiler as well. So after we've taken our gas rate, we would do this generally whilst we still at the boiler, but just to give you some idea of the, the process that you go through, um, I've broken it down. So we've gas rated our boiler with it being an imperial meter, we times how long it takes for one full revolution of the meter. We work that out at 31 seconds. We then take 3,600, which is the number of seconds in an hour, multiply it by 1040, which is the calorific value of natural gas in BTUs, we then divide it by the seconds taken for one full revolution. Um, <clears throat> that gives us 120,774 BTUs. We then take that and divide it by 3412, which is the conversion from BTUs to kilowatts. That gave us a gross kilowatt reading of 35.39 kilowatts. Now, we want the net, so we've divided it by 1.11, and we've ended up our appliances rated at 31.89 kilowatts. Now, we're allowed a five kilowatt tolerance above um, for our boiler. So the boiler MIs state that um, the net kilowatt output of this appliance is 30.93 kilowatts. So if we add 5% to that, we get 32.47. This is less than 32.47, so the boiler's rating fine. So we've confirmed that the flue's okay. We've inspected all of its joints. We've checked the flue outside. We've performed a combustion analysis reading on it, everything was okay. Um, and now we've also taken the inlet working pressure on the appliance at max rate and the gas rate at max rate. So we've categorically covered the flue and the, um, the gas section. So all that's left for us to do now is have a look at the appliance again and check the ventilation and the safety devices on the appliance. And then we can talk a bit more about what we're gonna do with the appliance after that. So let's go back over to the boiler and go from there. So we're back at the boiler now. Again, in, in, you know, in practice, you wouldn't be going away to a board. You'd be doing those calculations either on an app or in longhand at, at the appliance. Um, so here we are. We're now going to disconnect the manometer and we're going to test the, the test point with LVF. So I'll just do that first. Isolate the gas, disconnect the gauge. Tighten up the nut, turn the gas back on, and then give it a spray with LDF, just to make sure that there's no gas still escaping from the test point. Now we've done that, the other things we need to talk about is um, safety devices and ventilation. So ventilation, it's a room seal, um, room seal appliance, we don't need any ventilation for it. Some appliances that are room sealed do require ventilation if they're in compartments, however, this one doesn't. Um, so we don't have to worry about ventilation for the appliance, it's okay as it is. Now we're going to um, fire the boiler up, we're gonna put it in heating mode, and then we're gonna isolate the gas to it to test the safety devices. Um, the gas, the flame, the, the safety device on this boiler, the flame supervision device, is flame rectification. So when we isolate the gas, the, um, the, the board will stop receiving DC current and it should pretty much straight away shut down the appliance. Uh, we may go through an, a number of, of um, attempts of, to refire um, as we do with other boilers. But with this boiler, 
what, what in order to fill the time I'll talk about other appliances while that's happening. So I'll just pop the boiler on and hopefully we'll get a demand for heat at the boiler. So um, whilst we're just waiting for that, um, 26.9 checks on other appliances. Um, if you were to imagine you had a, a, a fire, a, a fire, a radium fire or whatever, in set living flame effect fire, what you would do is F, you would, for your flu, you would carry out a spillage and a flu flow test. Um, a, you would, for your air, you would work out the um, maximum kilowatt input of the fire in net. You would deduct seven kilowatts for adventitious air and then multiply by five, and then that would be roughly the, um, the uh, ventilation required for that fire. Um, G, again, you'd gas rate and take a burner pressure if required and then S, safety devices. So your safety devices on a fire is generally um, a thermoelectric valve with um, an oxypilot assembly. So you would, you would basically be checking that if you isolate the gas, the um, flame supervision device on the fire, the thermoelectric valve resets within 160, sorry, 180 seconds. Um, so that's on a fire. If we were talking about a, a, a gas hob, then we would be looking again at, um, for F, it's flueless. So we would basically be checking flame picture um, and, and making sure that the, the, the room had enough um, ventilation. So you'd be re referencing your um, flueless ventilation table for that. Um, if once you've got that, you can ascertain how much ventilation that appliance needs. Um, if it's got that, then we will then look at, um, again, gas rating. Again, with gas rating, we do um, three burners on a, on a hob and then safety devices, hops also thermoelectric valves with thermocouples. So once you isolate the gas, so see that's gone to E133 now, um, so that the, the appliance has gone to fault. Um, just touching back on hobs, the flame supervision device on hobs is a thermoelectric valve. So therefore we will be looking at turning the gas off and we would expect the thermoelectric valve to reset within 90 seconds for a hob or hob plate. Um, that gives you an idea as to what you would do with other appliances, not just boilers. Um, but again, as we can see from the appliance, from the, the boiler, we've now got an E133 fault, which means that the board has identified that there's no gas being sent through. Um, the flame supervision device, the flame rectification device, has identified that there's no flame being established, and therefore it's gone to a flame failure or an ionisation fault. Um, so that's a, that's a test that we've done by turning off the gas, and we can now safely say that the, safe, the flame supervision device or the safety device on this appliance is working. Um, so yeah, just to recap, 26.9 checks, F, flu, inspect the flu throughout its full length, you want to be checking seals, you want to be checking termination, you want to be checking in any, any rooms it goes through, if it was in a void you want to be checking it's got inspe inspection hatches, if it hasn't got an inspe inspection hatches we need to be checking it's got a seal monitoring system within the flu, within the void sorry, um, A, air supply, using your, your ventilation calculations depending on the appliance. What ventilation does that appliance need? Has it got it? Does it need it? Um, if it's in a compartment and the, and the room sealed appliance does need um, ventilation for cooling, then has it got the right compartment ventilation? Um, that's F and A. G, you've got your gas rate, um, inlet working pressure, burner pressure, where necessary both. Um, and then lastly, safety devices. It could be, you know, we've spoken about flame wreck on boilers but we could be talking about um, oxypilot assemblies with thermocouples and thermoelectric valves on fires or on, um, on um, cookers or hot plates or whatever it may be. We are going to do more videos on controls, so we will be looking to show you more about how controls operate and what, what their operating parameters are in future videos. Um, in the meantime, if there's any of the, um, I hope this video clears up 26.9 checks, where they come from and what they actually are, and also more importantly, what they look like when you're actually performing them. And then um, I hope that if there's any other videos that you guys want, you'll let us know. We can do them for you here at the centre. Um, but again, thanks for watching. And if you can, it's always appreciated if you can like and subscribe. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much for that, Michael, once again. Um, very, very good video. If you've got any questions, please put them in comments below. Uh, one thing I'd like to just... Um, mention really is always follow the installation instructions for the boilers for the fires hobs cookers whatever in particular for flues when you're checking your flues 
things like some flues need screws in um, on the joints some flues do not require um, screws so often you've got to check with the manufacturers um, information for that for instance a lot of people think that the Wiesman flu has got a little hole in it so they think that you should put self-tapping screws in there well actually Wiesman say not to put screws in that's not what it's for so don't take any of this information as factual check with the manufacturers check with the installation instructions check with the regulations at the time when we do these videos sometimes things might be in slightly a different sequence to how you do it in in the real world but we're just trying to show you what you would need to do so as i say always, always refer to installation instructions and any information that you have um your gas books or whatever but I ho hopefully this type of video is helping you if you um if you could put a thumbs up on the video i'd really appreciate that and if you want to put some comments below i know we keep going on about that but if we know what people videos people want then we can spend us time and effort doing them videos and just try and help as many as of the new trainees that are coming into the industry uh, try and help as many of them as possible also some of the people that have been in industry industry a long time and sometimes you can't remember everything so i personally i think these type of videos are good um for people that's been doing it a long time as well um and i'm babbling on i as always um but yeah please put some comments below thumbs up subscribe all that good stuff and hope, hopefully we'll see some of you soon at um, na uh, na uh, National Gas Centre for Excellence.